Hello everyone. Usually I do the updates or wrap ups on Friday in the morning, but this morning I found out at home that I had forgotten my notes. So now you're getting it now. I'm at the office as you can tell. And uh, so sometimes it happens that way. Hope you had a great one. It was pretty wet today. Uh, definitely pouring down out there and uh, a little bit cool too, but here tomorrow is supposed to be 14, Monday, or 12 tomorrow, 14 Monday, something like that. Uh, so some nicer spring-like conditions, the sunshine, the growth, I'm, I'm ready for it, all right? So as we've been going through our WBFs, we've been going through, you know, we're in Genesis now, Genesis chapter 1, creation and things. Uh, so let me read a few portions of scripture from Genesis chapter 1. Let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creatures that have life, the fowl that they might fly above the earth. God created great, great whales and every living creature that moveth after their kind, and every wing fowl after its kind, the living creatures after his kind, cattle and creeping thing, beast of the earth after his kind, and the beast of the earth after his kind, the cattle after their kind, and everything that creep upon the earth after his kind. Now that's not all the verses, but that gives you a kind of a prayer phrase of Genesis 1 verses 20-25. So in the creation of uh, account, God repeats 10 times that thing, living things were made and created after their kinds. All right? Here we see the word of God plainly and simply declare to us the truth about creation. Um, I'm going to tell you right now, there's no room for evolution in what God's created. Okay? There is no room for it. There's no way that all forms of light came from one common ancestor and went on. Because that fatly is the opposite of what God says. Okay? His final act of creation, God created a man. And in his image to have dominion over all the uh, animals over all the earth. That's in Genesis chapter 1 verses 26 to 27. And what does that mean that man is creating God's image? Where we're completely different from anything else God created during the creation week, okay? We're capable to, capacity to reason, to make, to invent, to create, to, to uh, communicate intelligently, and most importantly, is that we have a saving relationship with, we can have a saving relationship with the creator, Jesus Christ. No animal can do that, all right? Uh, that that's, makes us, sets us right apart. Uh, it wasn't, you know, until the 18th century that um, some men began to cast doubt on the biblical account of creation. Up until then, the vast majority of people accepted it as, as God created this world. That's who did it. All right. And unfortunately, during that time, influential clergy and scientists started to uh, adapt or adopt this view this teaching of millions of years of it took for earth history you know uh, and you know things to evolve and you know i mean it, it's so contrary to the word of god that that really throws the creation um account biblical view of creation right out the window uh, it gave false rise or gave rise to false views like day age theory the gap theory the belief that the earth was millions of years old uh, and, you know, paved the way for evolutionary ideas of Charles Darwin, okay, in the late 1800s. And evolutionary thought processes fit ne nicely into the idea that there's millions of years between each of these days and things. You know, our culture, our world today is immersed in the idea of evolution. I mean, it, they oh, swallowed the whole thing. That they're, that's what they're all about. The idea of evolu life evolving from lower forms is taught as a better alternate, superior alternate than creation. Uh, and we need to be diligent to teach that that's not true. That's not true. Uh, God created all things according to the, their kinds to reproduce after their kind. So what's a kind? Uh, the created kinds can be, you know, we could use the idea of families of animals. Each family is totally different than the other family. We've seen the Bible use the word kind in Genesis 1. When God created the plants and animals, he used the term again. 
much later when he tells Noah to gather up two of every kind into the ark. And then after the flood, God tells uh, Noah to bring out the, the, the two of every kind uh, to go out to repopulate, you know, go forth and multiply in Genesis chapter 8. All right. This truth found in Genesis completely is completely contrary and contradicts the evolutionary theory. All right, creation is totally different than evolution. You can't mix the two. All right, that's not possible. It God created it, or it's evolution. You can't move it together. And no animal has ever turned into a human being. No animal. God's word tells us that uh, men are created in God's image. We're not animals. Evolution is not true. Uh, unfortunately, as society and many in churches, um, I mean, it's crazy that churches would accept evolutionary world theory or try to uh, bring in those day-age gap theories and things in. You know, it downgrades the word of God. And, you know, and it leads... And it's affecting our nation, our culture today. And man is just an animal. Now, more evolved than other animals, but still an animal. And, you know, that has led uh, to social decisions and ways of thinking that led down some deadly paths. Okay? Abortion. Hey, I mean, we're, we don't have a purpose. We're all kind of by accident. I mean, really, that's evolutionary. How did we get? It was just a big accident. It was a big bang. Uh, dehumanizing of people, slavery, uh, euthanasia. I mean, again, we're just we're just animals. Put you out of your misery, and you can connect that into genocide that's taken place in numerous places around the world. I mean, again, we're just animals. That's that's the evolutionary thought process, and that worldview causes has caused, will cause great chaos in our society. And the reality is, as a generations or as generations follow, follow this teaching, which they are doing because it's in our world, it's being taught, they will not know God. They, they don't understand their need of salvation. Uh, and, and, you know, they're drifting further away from any kind of truth, Okay. So for those who love the Lord, who are saved, which I hope if you're watching, you are, you know, Christ is Savior, that that should be a really big pull for us to make sure that we're teaching the truth and that we're declaring the truth and that people know that it all began in Genesis. All right, the authority of the Bible, Genesis 1-1, that's where it starts. We can't be taking verses and just say, oh, well, We'll mush this into this or whatever. No, it's the truth. It doesn't need, it doesn't need me and you or anybody to mess around with it. All right? So God created this world, and he did it perfectly. Sin entered, and it went sideways. There's no doubt about it. But what God created, it was good. All right, so I hope that's a help to you. Um, we have, in about 30 minutes, we're getting, getting going here shortly. We're going to have puzzles and pizza. Uh, so we're looking forward to that just just around the corner. Uh, tomorrow, there's no Facebook devotion. Uh, following Saturday, we'll have Facebook devotion at 8.30. Pastor Matt is on tap to take care of that. So just so you don't, so tomorrow, sleep in. You don't have to get up at 8.30 or whatever, you, whatever time you watch it, but it won't be tomorrow. Uh, and then Sunday, I hope you plan to be in church. And if you can be in our church, we would love to have you. And if you can't come and be with us in person, we're online. Uh, so we're, we have an opportunity to reach and minister to you that way. 9 a.m., we're going to be in John chapter 12, and uh, we're going to look at an extravagant gift. We're going to look at that on uh, Sunday morning at 9, and then Sunday morning at 11, uh, we uh, we praise the Lord that over here in the east wing, we're getting packed in here. Um, we had a, I think we had three seats open last Sunday at 11, which was great. Uh, but we're breaking up into some classes, so there'll be one upstairs, uh, and then there's a class this Sunday coming in the basement or in the fellowship area downstairs uh, for the ladies uh, coming up. And then after, the week after, it's going to be True North down there, our college and career. Uh, so we're going to split it up, trying to free up some space, which that's a wonderful problem. I love it that there's lots of folks coming out to church. That's a blessing. Uh, so 
ladies downstairs uh, with my wife uh, for in the fellowship hall there, and uh, for us up here, uh, the men and things, and uh, is look. We're going to be looking start a little series on standing firm, and we're going to examine the life of Daniel and his three friends. So it's just not about Daniel, but the three his three friends as well: Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And uh, sometimes we feel in our world that it's wicked, and it is. Uh, and there's a lot of bad things happening, and there is. Uh, but Daniel and his three friends, they stood up for Christ in a in a very wicked world. Uh, where they were was bad, but they stood firm for Christ, and the Lord blessed them in a great way. So I think it'd be an encouragement to you. So if you, you can't uh, be here, you know, we'll be online as well. And uh, for anybody who like the ladies who are going to be downstairs for the, in the fellowship hall, they can catch it later too. Because we're going to Make sure everything is taped or so you can go back and look at it on Facebook. All right. I think that's it. And I do appreciate you checking in, watching the video. I appreciate that so much. Have a great Friday night. Stay out of the rain. Stay warm and things. Hope you have a great weekend. Like I said, hope to see you on Sunday. Take care and God bless.